नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम so welcome to this lecture on advanced transition metal organometallic chemistry today's is the second lecture in our first lecture we had briefly spoken about various kinds of allyl and anilyl ligands offer a wide range of electron donating capacities in terms of electrons that they donate while binding to transition metals and this range can go from two electron donor to a about eight electron donor another interesting feature about this allyl and enyl ligands is the fact that these ligands can bind in neutral anionic and cationic forms now ligand <coughs> binding to metal in neutral and anionic form however ligand binding to metal in a cationic form is kind of counter intuitive the reason being ligands are supposedly thought of as something which is electron rich whereas metals are supposedly thought of something which are electron deficient so the metal ligand interaction is an interaction that involves electron rich species with that of a electron deficient species now cationic ligand in this context is kind of counter intuitive now being cationic the ligand no longer can be thought of as something which is electron rich and hence it is kind of not so easy to conceive the fact that how cationic ligands bind to transition metals now one of the versatility of this allyl and anyl uh, ligands is the fact that they can bind both in radical anionic and cationic forms in our last lecture we have also uh, looked at the transition metal allyl and anyl ligand interaction and what we saw is that it contains two kinds of ligand to uh, transition metal sigma and pi interactions sigma interaction as well as ligand to transition metal pi type interaction and lastly there is also a transition metal to ligand interaction which is of pi type and they are called as back donation because the obvious donation of electron density happens from ligand to metal ligand to metal and in back donation there is a reversal of donation that occurs from transition metal on to ligand now these three interactions constitute this transition metal allyl interaction we have discussed this uh, in our uh, previous lecture and these forward donation th the first two are called forward donation and the second one is uh, the uh, third one is called backward donation these two interaction sort of define transition metal uh, allyl uh, ligands 
uh, uh, or ligand bond. Now, with that said, in this lecture, what we intend to do is to look at various preparatory methods uh, uh, which are out there for preparing this transition metal allyl complexes. Now, obviously, there are several methods which are available for synthesizing this transition metal allyl type complexes and depending on the nature of the synthesis, these preparative methods can be classified into three classes or subclasses. So, this preparation of transition metal allyl complexes can be classified into three subclasses and first one is replacement of an halide on a metal by an allyl moiety or allyl anion. So, this is simple similar to salt metathesis exchange where there is a halide on the metal precursor and the allyl anion goes and replaces the halide uh, resulting in transition metal allyl uh, bond. The second method is a rearrangement reaction of a eta 1 bound sigma allyl bond to a <coughs> pi bound eta, eta, eta 3 bound pi allyl bond. So, over here the hapticity changes from eta 1 to eta 3 and as a result a sigma allyl ligand become a pi allyl ligand. We will take a, a, a look at various examples which belongs to this category. Now, the third one is a conversion of pi olefin. Now, olefin usually is bound in a eta 2 or eta 4 fashion to a pi allyl allyl ligand which is bound in a eta 3 fashion. So, to summarize what we see is that there are uh, various uh, methods available for the synthesis of transition metal allyl complexes and all of these methods can be further classified into three main types uh, of preparations. Uh, first of all uh, being a simple re a replacement of a halide anion uh, on the metal precursor by an allyl uh, anion and the second one is a rearrangement of a allyl moiety from eta 1 bound sigma allyl ligand to a uh, eta 3 bound pi allyl ligand and third one is a conversion of pi olefin ligand which are bound eta 2 or eta 4 to uh, the transition metal 2 and pi allyl uh, ligand which is an eta 3 bound. These are the uh, uh, three sub uh, classes of methods which are available for preparation of uh, transition metal allyl complexes. Now, let us look at uh, these uh, subclasses individual subclasses in much more details. The first one obviously, as I said is a reaction of metal salt plus main group organometallics. This reaction is popularly called as a metathesis reaction. For example, 
nickel bromide reacting with two equivalents of allyl magnesium bromide in ether at low temperature minus 10 degree centigrade produces nickel bisallyl similarly cobalt acetyl acetonate thrice reacting with three equivalents of allyl magnesium bromide produces cobalt tris allyl now this compound is highly unstable and its decomposition temperature is above minus 50 5 degree centigrade. So, uh, in order to stabilize this cobalt tris allyl compound, one has to be or attain a temperature range below minus 55 degree centigrade. Similarly, zirconium tetrachloride reacting with four equivalents of allyl magnesium bromide magnesium chloride again in ether at minus 78 degree centigrade produces zirconium tetraallyl complex. Now, One important features which stands out is the utility of a Grignard reagent in these metathesis reactions. And second thing that stands out is that this method is represents a very general method for synthesizing binary allyl complex. General route to binary allyl complex. Now, these binary allyl complexes are also called homoleptic complexes. complexes because they are made of one kind of ligand. If a transition metal organometallic compound is made of two different kinds of ligand or more than one different types of ligand, these are can also be uh, referred to as being heteroleptic complexes. So, over here transition uh, metal by uh, binary allyl complexes it can be synthesized very easily using this general route. Now, one interesting thing about organometallic compound particularly with respect to binary allyl complex is that these complexes are supposedly very reactive and this reactivity is primarily due to their kinetic levelity rather than that of thermodynamic origin. And from that perspective preparation of pure binary allyl uh, binary allyl complexes or any a, a binary homoleptic organometallic complexes remains a challenge and from that perspective this particular route which exclusively gives binary allyl complex uh, is of uh, particular uh, importance. Now as I mentioned <coughs> uh, that these binary allyl compounds are extremely uh, reactive and because of this reason the synthesis and isolation are to be done at low temperature.
requires low temperature as these ligands are thermolabile. So, now let us look at the, uh, the next method available for synthesizing these transition metal allyl complexes and this particular method involves reaction of uh, a carbonyl metallate anion with allyl halide. So, the reaction is given as five plus C five H five C L giving allyl M N C O 5 which is eta 1 and this losing a carbon monoxide giving eta 3 M N C O 4. In the earlier reaction where allyl Grignard was used, the allyl ligand was used in its anionic form. Whereas, when allyl chloride is being used in this reaction, then the allyl moiety is used in its partially electron deficient or cationic form because chlorine being more electronegative, the carbon uh, <coughs> bound to the chlorine will be del positively in the charge. And for from that perspective for this, this reactions to happen one needs to have a metal uh, species which is highly el electron rich and this can be attained none other than with uh, this metallate anion. So, in metallate anion there is a sodium uh, uh, positively charged sodium bound to MnCO5 minus. So, metal is really electron rich and hence it attacks uh, uh, this allyl chloride giving rise to eta 1 allyl MnCO5 that sub, uh, subsequently loses a carbon monoxide resulting in eta 3 MnCO4 allyl uh, uh, complex. So, here we see an example of the second method that we spoke which involved a rearrangement of eta 1 to eta 3 allyl moiety. So, the second example of this also involves a reaction, another reaction of a CP tri tricarbonyl molybdate anion. So, again this is a, a metallate this reacts with benzyl chloride loses a chlorine to give a eta bound bound molybdenum alkyl complex. which loses carbon monoxide to give a eta 3 bound allyl complex.
so this is an allele pi complex of benzyl anion and so over here it is eta 3 over here it is eta 1 and this sigma pi rearrangement this is called a sigma pi rearrangement takes place with the loss of CO and and can be initiated photochemically as has been done over here with this light or even thermally. Now, this photochemical dissociation of carbon monoxide as well as thermo thermal dissociation of carbon monoxide at elevated temperatures have been reported or are known for a long time and such can be systematically utilized in preparation of eta 3 allyl complexes from eta 1 allyl complex using this sigma pi rearrangement reaction. The another example of this metal allyl complex synthesis involves the reaction of metal carbonyls with allyl halide. For example, reaction of Cp cobalt dicarbonyl with allyl iodide gives this cationic Cp cobalt allyl carbonyl compound with an iodide anion plus a neutral Cp cobalt allyl iodide. Of to note that these two both the species are 18 electron compounds for example, 5 from C p, 9 from C, uh, uh, cobalt, 2 from carbonyl and 3 A from allyl this resulting in and a cationic charge uh, uh, to that. So, resulting in overall 18 valence electron compound. The same counting can be done for the other compound 5 for C p, 9 for cobalt, 1 for iodide and 3. So, this also gives in 18 electron valence electron compound. So, the other method for preparation of transition metal allyl complexes is from the transition metal olefin uh, compounds. This is the example which belongs to the third category and uh, that starts with the reaction of a metal hydride with diolefin.
cobalt tetracarbonyl hydride reacting with butadiene loses a carbonyl to give this allyl cobalt tricarbonyl a mixture of this isomer this one is anti and the other one is syn. This reaction proceeds via the transition state which involves this cobalt hydride adding against this conjugated double bond and the transition state thus is tetracarbonyl cobalt methyl complex which then subsequently loses a carbon monoxide to give the syn anti isomers. Of the two the syn as seen from the geometry the syn isomer is more stable. So, with this I come to uh, the end of today's lecture in which we have uh, uh, spoken about various methods which are available for preparation of transition metal allyl complexes. Now, the methods uh, uh, that are available they all can be classified into three subgroups. One is simple metathesis type where a metal precursor uh, halide uh, is replaced with a allyl anion. The second one is a, a, a transition metal alleles eta 1 bound sigma allyl complex rearranging to transition metal bound eta 3 allyl complex. And the third one is a conversion of the, uh, transition metal bound olefin uh, complex to a transition metal allyl complex. Now, for the uh, first uh, examples it is very simple it is simple metathesis of uh, metal halide precursors uh, with uh, uh, met, uh, allyl anions these are usually derived from Grignards like allyl uh, uh, Grig, uh, magnesium bromide and chloride and this method is a very useful method for preparing the challenging uh, transition metal binary allyl complexes. These homolyptic transition metal organometallic complexes are extremely uh, reactive and difficult to synthesize from that perspective this metathesis reaction producing binary uh, transition metal allyl complex is noteworthy and uh, one has to uh, be aware of the fact that these compounds are unstable and hence the synthesis and isolation of this tra transition metal allyl complex says have to be undertaken at a very low temperature. Now, the second method uh, the sub, uh, sub method involved pre, uh, conversion of sigma transition metal sigma allyl complex to eta 3 bound transition metal uh, allyl complex. This reaction uh, reactions primarily involve formation of these compounds from transition metallate complexes with uh, allyl halides and subsequently a decoordination of carbon monoxide resulting in eta 3 bound transition metal allyl complex. So, there are two and three uh, two or three different methods which utilizes the same principle where a uh, eta bound uh, sigma uh, allyl complex is converted to a uh, uh, eta 3 bound transition metal allyl complex. And lastly uh, the third subclass involve uh, the conversion uh, reaction of transition metal hydride with diolefins and in the process generating eta 3 bound allyl complexes. The reaction that we have looked at is cobalt hydride tetracarbonyl reacting with butadiene giving uh, a mixture of syn and anti isomer of 
uh, allyl cobalt tricarbonyl uh, compounds and of the two syn and anti isomer the syn isomer is more stable than the other isomer. So, with this I conclude this today's uh, discussion on transition metal allyl complexes as for today a uh, the more some more of the preparative uh, uh, methods still remains and which will be uh, the subject of uh, discussion in the uh, next uh, lecture and we are going to also look at the reactivity of this kind of transition metal allyl uh, complexes before we move on to other uh, enyl uh, ligands. So, with that thank you uh, for being patiently uh, listening to this lecture and I look forward to uh, taking up this topic in more details when we meet soon. Thank you.